I wasn't sharing my screen, <laughs> or I mean, I wasn't recording. So it's recording now. Um, but with that, let's go ahead. I'm going to share my screen and look at the exhibition. And we'll let um, Karen talk about some of the works because there's a couple different types of works um, in the exhibition. And so we wanted to show the different animations that she does. And so um, Karen, do you want to go ahead and as I kind of scroll through, um, talk about them and we, um, I can show the videos and, you know, as you talk about them, do you want to talk about the different types of animation you do and, you know, kind of take it from there? Sure. Um, this is probably my most, I don't know, playful sort of way of doing animations where I will create, I will, I'll start with something that is animated, um, lots of color, and then process what I've animated different ways. So in this one, each segment is the same, probably 12 second loop, um, but they, been processed in different ways. I believe I'm trying to remember how I created these. Um, probably, and I'll be showing this a little bit later. Um, this one I think I actually did in Photoshop where I moved, where I just used a gradient and played with the gradient some time, maybe, maybe after effects or something, some way to get it from one end to the other and loop. And then each of these bits, these segments, there are different um, paint brushes that I create in a program called Studio Artist. Uh, the company is Synthetic. And um, in that one, these paint brushes react to the base material in different ways. So they might look at the orientation of the shapes. They might, um, I might direct them to look at uh, the luminescence, which is actually kind of my favorite, so that the brush will bend or, or be at an angle according to the luminescence. Um, the brush can change over time to different angles and get different um, different effects. Um, even using the same brush, if over time the brush changes angles, then the animation can sort of rotate, even though everything is still. So, so sometimes, actually, I think of this. What? I just went echo Yes, yeah, yep, my husband got too close again. <laughs> Trying to mute him. Oh, there we go. <laughs> yeah, but it's coming through my speaker. Is the problem? Is the anyway? Whatever. Oh, gotcha. Whatever. Yeah. Anyway, so that was that one. Actually, the spectrum may not have been animated itself. It may have simply been that all the paint brushes were moving in different. Let's see if the colors change in their location. And you know, no, so in this one, I was actually working from a still image. Karen, even, um, you know, I should have asked from the beginning, sure. how did, what got you into animation? Like what, you know, how, <laughs> you know, um, tell us about the beginning. Like where, where did your love of animation come from? Wow, that's probably a long time ago. And it really is related to the software. Um, the, creating these these paint brushes and I knew that they could um, do a, a rotoscope uh, footage that they could paint an image on top of a frame of, of a video so or using the frame as a reference material um, it was kind of a next step. It just, let's see what I can do. And I started doing it and just loved it. Um, how it, and, and then I really was kind of more painting on top of a photograph. Um, some, some of the pieces you have here are um, 
process with video footage that's taken video, not created. Um, the the created work is it's all sorts of algorithms that are um, modules in these graphic synthesizers that I can put together and not necessarily always make them do what I want to, but um, they present me with surprises that I can then manipulate. <laughs> So it, it, it's, I, I like the discovery of it. I like the, the, the meditation of actually watching these things draw. Um, I don't know, maybe now is, it, let, let, let me share the screen for a second. Okay. And even before, um, you know, so these came from, um, you should be able to. Um, so these came from your, you know, your previous work using Photoshop, you know, the flowers that maybe people don't quite know about. You want to talk a little bit about that? Um, I tell you what, when some of the animations actually show layers being built up and we can talk about that with that right here, okay. I'm actually rendering frame by frame an animation. Um, the original piece let me see if i can run that one up here that one is this program so in this program which is artmatic designer i have created um it would be a looping animation or kind of like a breathing animation it just goes one way and then back to the beginning and then comes in and goes back to the beginning um let's see if I that. So in these, I can play around with the colors. I can, there are, I mean, there are just all sorts of different controls. I can change what, um, you know what, before I do that, I'm going to save this one. Okay. Um, so I can, these are all different kinds of uh, things that I can change. Um, they are really meditative. And then I can change color bases, they're, they're, but they're all sorts of things. The, the, the shape of the tree will change um, the structures. This bottom piece down here is the one that I can change into being a photograph. Let's see if I can find that on here. This is their new version that works with the new no, that's not the photograph one um, that works with the new Apple system. And I don't like it as much as my old version that worked with the old system. But. Um, and so all of these start with a photograph or, you know, no, yeah. these ones are total digital constructs. There's there's all the pixels were invented by the computer. OK. Um, based on the different. Let me see if I can. Yeah, okay, wow. So that one put some weird little diamonds in there. Anyway, this is, I, I rendered this out as a video. And then this is now I'm animating uh, this video. It's showing frame by frame and let me get you to colors three we go here we can kind of see how the animation is coming along very cool and of course when it's all pre-rendered and put into a um, to a video file, then then it's a lot smoother than this. I'm, I'm using an arrow. So 
that's kind of a brief tour of how these animations come together. And let me go back. I can share the screen again and share, right. um, look at the, some of the other animations that you have here. How do you start? Like, what is your starting point when you, you know, create these? Like with a color, with a, a shape, with a brush, with like, what is the first thing you think about when you decide to create one of these animations? Um, a lot of the time they're, they're sort of based on what I've just done before. Um, and, and by the time it gets to what I'm actually doing, um, I've been playing around with the idea for a while. The, uh, what would happen if, that's kind of, <laughs> if I took this big brightly colored ball thing and rotated it, but let's not just rotate it, let's make the design on it sort of change as it's rotating. And then I go around and I play. And it, it really comes out of a lot of play and a lot of um, chance, you know, maybe randomness. There's, I'll say, oh, that looks interesting. And then I just start exploring. So well, how usually on these ones, I've been, I'll get stuck. Or I've been doing photographic work for a while and go like, oh, I'm sick of looking at photographs. Let's, uh, let's go play around over here. Just <laughs> <laughs> and then for the variations thing, then it's like, well, so then what can I go do in the other program, the one that I'm doing the rendering in? What what can I change there to make it more interesting? And how does that react with the images that I'm playing around with? And then figuring out the puzzle of how to put it together, um, how to put all the different pieces together later to make it all flow. Um, it really is, I don't know, I'm just, I'm just playing around. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to have to remember for a title for a future show, what would happen if? <laughs> what would happen if? Yes, I love that title. <laughs> All right. Here's another one. A line test. So this one, um, the my base image is basically a I think it was a three pixel wide line in one, two, three, four concentric squares. Um, and I had colors move, moving around in the original one. Um, not, a, not sure if I could remember how I did that. <laughs> a lot of it is, is sort of while I'm doing it and then it's like I have to really think about it later to figure out what I did. Um, but I had the colors moving around in one direction. And then I started saying, well, what will happen if I may have the lines going kind of against each other color wise, and then playing around with the different brushes and the angles that those brushes are being applied to get these different effects. And then I just sit there and I watch the do it and figure other people will like watching it happen too. <laughs> Now I know you're, you know, you sing in choir, um, you're into music. Have you thought about creating your own music for these? I do have one where I created music and it's companion piece. Um, I'm trying to remember, did I actually, I, I mixed some loops. Oh, cool. <laughs> I did not create music. Um, but this <laughs> companion piece, my daughter-in-law composed music for it. And oh, that's those awesome. Two, along with the elementals um, banners that were at MOA. Oh, yeah. And, um, right. So that was the um, was elementals dot mind dot blown and dot fabric dot alive. So the mind blown one, she created the music. Um, you know, my brothers are the musicians in the family. I, I, my, my instrument is my voice and I'm not a songwriter. So <laughs> I, I do, I do the visual. Someone else could do the, do the auditory, but never say never. Yep. 
I mean, what would happen if, you know? <laughs> um, so tell us, these are a little bit different. Tell us about these. So I had a show um, called Anonymous at the Beach, which was mainly composed of uh, photograph-based work that I, I had taken over the years, but um, some of them were old and some of them were a, kind of a brand new way of doing this, but they were all using the program Studio Artist, um, which is the one that makes the paint brushes. And I've been working for a while trying to get this um, idea of motion from still images. And I, I did one, I think I might have submitted that on this one called Wave Walker. And it's this kind of really choppy and it was done uh, maybe every 12 frames of someone walking, I would, was a, was a frame. So it wasn't really smooth, but I, I started working with how to get the sense of movement. And you can see like those trailing, the trailing that happens as the bikes go across. Um, that was what I was trying to really accomplish is to get this sense of motion in this series of still images. Um, so this one, I think it was three weeks before I installed, I decided to go to Venice Beach and get some footage because the show wasn't complete because I needed some animations. Because <laughs> uh, <laughs> with three, you know, with three weeks to go and tell a show, why not create a whole bunch of animations? Yeah. So, <laughs> so, so, so that's what I did. I, and I actually did another piece on with a bunch of them that were small bits. Um, but again, from that same um, afternoon at Venice Beach. So this, this one goes on for a while until the, the patrol guy in the, um, at the lifeguard stand until it starts with him coming in and it leaves with him going out. And my God, he was there forever. There's so much footage that's not in this. <laughs> um, and this one actually does have a soundtrack. It's the, the ambient sound around um, the, 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 the parking lot noise, basically. There's a little bit of ocean and the sound of bicycle bells and a couple of birds. And, and there's, there's some, there's a heated argument going on in the back. And oh, funny. I know this is one of my favorites. Yeah. So this is definitely a nice meditative piece to just watch everybody go across the, the, the strand at, at Venice. And then let's see, um, another one from the series. Right, and this one actually is another one that has all sorts of different, um, brushwork going on. So you might want to show a little bit of the sort of crosshatch piece and then maybe click a little bit further okay. into it. Oops. Can you do that on this? You know, <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> wow. Okay. I know. But there again, I'm playing with, so what is happening here is that the image is being drawn and then the next frame comes up and I'm not erasing the background image. I'm drawing on top of it, but I'm not drawing it so solid that nothing shows through. And then the next image draws on top of that one. And that's how the um, watch as it goes by. How you can see the, what was there before comes through. I don't, yeah, I love the line. I know, you can let that one play and <laughs> we can go down and see something else. And... Yeah, we could see if it'll uh, if it'll keep playing as uh, yeah as we look at the next one. All right, so this this piece went along with another of my um, the showing of the banners of the fabric work and and laser work. Um, these six flowers, each of them were in the realm of white. Um, were re represented on banners, uh, silk banners that had headers of them that were um, laser cut. And the theme of the show, Vexilla Florum, it was about the 
feminine nature of flowers and the, the sort of warlike aspect of, of banners and um, flags and how they have a militaristic um, aspect to them. But that's, that's kind of the original is this, this, hey, I'm over here, either shoot me or don't shoot me, depending on which side you're on. But uh, you would rally around the flag and I was putting a more feminizing flower power um, forward in that one. And so these, this animation here was trying to get different sort of parade formations with the flowers. Um, Let's see really fast. Uh, oh, it looks like it's yeah, I guess it, it pauses oh, it when you're gone. I wonder if I can, oh no. I see the little thing there moving, but. Oh, maybe right. you can. No, it won't let me. Ah. Yeah. Curses. I know. And normally you can even like view it outside, but I guess Vimeo is different. You know, like view it in Vimeo, but I guess it's different uh -huh. here. Oh, well. <laughs> oh, well. Everybody yeah. can, can go. go but this yeah. one continued on. No, oh, no, it didn't. It stopped. Yeah. Right. So this is, I was trying to get troops in formation doing that sort of, you know, where they walk and don't hit each other. But of course, it didn't quite work that way. But they lined up and I let them do kind of a kaleidoscope thing and then they marked off again. Yeah, this was great in the installation. It was like perfect. right. This one, yeah, this one showed. I had the banners lining the room, uh, the sides of the room, and then the animation was projected onto the wall in front, and it was very effective. This is another one where I there is sound to it, and that was just that was some royalty free thing I found online that that I thought fit with a kind, it was kind of marchy, but it was also kind of spiritual. And right, this again is the troops on parade. You know, I've seen this video so many times and I didn't even realize until you just said, like, I didn't notice the, the you know, the, um, what did you call it? Like the, well, the marching or the formation you know, like right. that, that emulates, you know, like troops. Mm -hmm. Very cool. And then another elementals. All right, so the first one was from Vexilla Florum. This one was yeah. from elementals. Um, and here I had the, the four elements, the earth, wind, fire, water. I always forget what the fourth one is. Um, so this is earth. Uh, this photograph was uh, kind of mossy covered rocks at the beach in Santa Barbara. Um, they, they jut up from the shallows at an, at an angle and they get like all sorts of little tiny shells and other rocks caught in them. Um, there, so this is Earth. It goes to, I don't know what the next one is. This is air. Now, all of these images were manipulated in um, Artmatic Designer, which is the one that I did the base animations in. So they were, it was a still image that um, I put different reflections and distortions on um, and have them change over time. In that program, I can create different keyframes. So it goes from here to there to there, and, and the computer figures out all the in-between steps to get it there. So this here's fire. This one, it was eh, probably June or July when I 
took this image in my fireplace at home because I needed some fire. <laughs> um, the soundtrack on these, they don't come through very well when you're screen sharing, but there's crackling of fire in the background here. The, um, the air one coming up has wind chimes through it. So getting, getting that feel of, of what's happening as part of the soundtrack. It's just lagging a little bit. Can hear the waves on this one. Mm -hmm. The um, hard pieces, the, the the artworks as opposed to the animations in here each had a motif that was made from the photograph and a background that was a repeating pattern. And so that was tying the fabric aspect in with that. This is the one that my daughter-in-law, uh, Cress Johnson Brown, uh, um, scored for me. Oh, cool. the changing background in each of these ones, um, the modules that I had set up are taking the background out of what is happening um, in the rest of the, in, in the circle part. So I actually kind of exploited that sort of flashing in the background to make the transitions between the different um, module so there when i got to the end i was just using flat colors to bounce back and forth to merge between the two between each segment you know it's really interesting how this emulates the bubble the bubble work that you've been making oh <laughs> you know uh, uh, the, i'm sure they're not unrelated yeah exactly <laughs> i think you I'm, need to show i them. Make, next to each other it's quite possible that uh oh, we're virus free that's nice yeah. to know. <laughs> um it's quite possible that the um patch the the preset that i created to make this i may have grabbed that as a basis for working with the distortion and the bubbles i would certainly assume that i'm using some of the same modules inside of the preset to to get that um, sphere shape a lot of times i'm taking a, a, a preset that i've created and then i'll go in and i'm working with new imagery so that doesn't work right and then i use that as my basis to play with the next one um and if all else fails there's a random button <laughs> I know these are great to just sit and like take in, you know, and like meditate mm -hmm. to. And they are very hypnotic, like Dale is saying, and mindful. Now, um, something we haven't talked about, but these are for sale. What do you, because video are, you know, some people don't know how to buy them or don't understand how buying video art works. Like, what would you expect a collector to do with these? Or, you know, how have you experienced, you know, selling them? 
Um, I don't have a lot of experience selling them. <laughs> um, I would expect that um, they would throw it up on their television at parties, or or if they or to meditate to or enjoy. I, I don't know a lot of video collectors. I don't know what they do with their collections. We should talk to the person that bought the piece at the show yeah. here to see what they're doing. Yeah. Can we see what he's doing? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, but that's great. You know, if you have like a large screen monitor or TV or, you know, I mean, not necessarily parties now, but. <laughs> no, no, but the, um, the, 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 yeah, I mean, I like the idea. I mean, I see these as animated artworks. So yeah. I do actually design them to be looped, most of them. Um, so you could just put it on and instead of having, you know, a, a poster on the wall, you've got a moving piece of artwork. Yeah, like Monica that, said, that, that would, background. <laughs> I would think that that would be the highest and best use would be to have them as something that you just live with in your life. Yeah, I love that idea of a Zoom background, Monica. <laughs> something to think about, Karen. And Francisco is asking, are you um, are you also selling the rights to the digital animation? No. Yeah, I would I would I would, I would be selling just just like a print. Um, yeah, I'm not home now and probably couldn't arrange for this all of my high resolution images but someone buying it would get the the best um the best resolution that i have i would put it on a nice disc in a pretty box that might or might not have a still from the image uh, from from the animation um you know to, to sort of identify it i know that there are companies that do that sort of thing for, yeah for, for weddings and whatever <laughs> um but I, but i would present it very nicely and um at its highest resolution which is not what on online you're not going to get the high resolution so yeah. really what they're what they're buying is a, is a better version yeah. and and my love <laughs> <laughs> so the, this piece here each of each of the um panels and the elementals had um, two QR codes on them. And one QR code led to an animation similar to this, which shows how the piece, how the layers of the piece were built up. And I paired how they were presented by the, these, the, the fire, Ignis is coming in in flames. And the rock one, I had the pieces sort of drop and funk into place and the water one, they kind of, you know, they flow into place and air is sort of more wispy and lots of pixels that kind of come together. So when you clicked on the QR code, this would come up on your phone. You did on the other one, I showed the base image that I used and I paired it with a poem. Perfect. And oh, here's have... one. Oh, um, oh sorry. Yeah. Um, no, Sawa was saying um, a thumb drive, you know, to be plugged into a TV and play instantly. And right, I, right. That, that would be what I would have in the package. Yeah. Would be a, a flash drive. Yeah, and it. I love the idea, and I think I've seen them before. Also, that you know that what you're presented with is like the work of art. Also, is the packaging, you know, in the way you know, kind of what you were saying. Yeah. 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 So 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 I'm not I'm not kind of like ready at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> to do this packaging, but I know it's I know it's available. I could even take a wood box and use my laser cutter. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> well, in the meantime, you can just give them a disc, I think. Or did you give Jeff a thumb drive or a disc? It was a thumb drive, yeah. Yeah, okay. Okay. That's usually the easiest. And of course, I'm on a Macintosh and the thumb drives have to be formatted properly and stripped of their extra files and blah blah blah. So that they'll play. <laughs> So this is the piece I was talking about where I was taking um, kind of like more still images and trying to create movement out of them. 
and you'll see each piece comes in and it stays where it is until I think there was a lot more after effects than happening. I think I placed these people in after effects rather than the ones where the program is mm. creating the movement all by itself. These are great. You can see like in each video as we, you know, in each video as we watch them, like, you know, just how you are playing and experimenting and bringing in different visuals. Like I see in this video, um, you know, in, inspiration from like the first video that we saw, you know, and the tools that you're using. And these are anonymous people on the beach, right? Correct. <laughs> You're using, yeah. Correct. <laughs> I, 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 you know, and I, I want to be anonymous on the beach, and I don't care who these people are, but I like, <laughs> I really, I've been taking pictures on the beach since I had a camera. So it's, um, I had an assignment in a watercolor class to do either one person or a scene with at least a hundred people. And I chose to do a hundred people. And I took images from magazines of including like the, the young Kennedys with their child up in the air. There's there, there, <laughs> there all sorts of, and so I did the speech scene and of course when you get, and then there are like a lots of little dots in the water too as it went on. But that kind of was, I'd been collecting like umbrella imagery, um, beach umbrellas and people on the beach. Mm -hmm. And it's just been a fascination for a long time to, to watch people playing at the beach. And, uh, and they're, they're, they're nice shapes and they're bright colors. And, um, People are having a good time. And then I get to go home. Then I go home and then I play with that. So. <laughs> yep. I love Monica's remark. This reminds me of a Vonnegut theory of every moment existing at the same time. <laughs> a little like chronos plastic infundibulum going on there. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Here was another one of the. Right. So this one here, as I say, they kind of like funk in place. <laughs> So that was the, and these are the layers that I put in. And then you will also notice that everything will get clearer and shaded as this goes. <laughs> I love that these are little gifts, you know, I mean, like gifts, G I F T S. Right. <laughs> you oh. know, that you get when you look at the actual work, you know, mm -hmm. in person. It's always gratifying when I see someone who's got their cell phone up to one of my pieces and actually investigating the QR. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So, so this piece here, the, the finished piece is um, cochlear calla lily. Um, I thought they looked like ear, like kind of the spiraling on, in the ear. And all of the different layers are coming into place in this animation. This is probably one of the more involved and fancier ones of these animations that I did. It's really elegant. It's a little, a little bit of pulling back the curtain. <laughs> um, this is Victoria Rose. This is a rose that I took on at the Bouchard Gardens uh, in Victoria. So that was the, the base image that I used here. That was the only image in this piece. Hi. Yeah. Yep, you're still- I'm sorry, wrong kind. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and here again, this, uh, Piece was taken at the LA County Arboretum. They're famous 
aloe walk with some gorgeous clouds up there. I love how you're showing where the original image came from too. This piece, um, the background is painted with the studio artist, um, was part of a 50-50 show uh, up in Pacifica, California at the Sanchez Art Center where I did 50 pieces in 50 days. <laughs> and each one had a background that was painted and then I reflected by eight. And then I think I put in, did I make a rule? I might've made a rule that I was only gonna do three layers. So, and then they're all colored. Um, so, so it was a real kind of, it was a rainbow of colors in there. But I, when I showed them, I showed them, um, mixed so so it didn't look like a rainbow but and then there was a key that actually i did 49 of them the the key the 50th showed the base image of each flower as it was arranged in the grid of seven by seven oh, cool. so i don't do anything halfway <laughs> <laughs> and i love that we're ending with this one because it you know it kind of comes full circle as far as you know the first animations that we showed you know, down to like your, you know, the more of the flower kaleidoscopic pieces. So awesome. Let's go ahead and go back to everybody. Um, do you, does anybody have any questions or any other questions <laughs> for Karen about her work? Yeah, I mean, I, I certainly wasn't looking at the feed. Were there any questions in there? I think we covered them all. Um, I think if I missed any, I apologize, but I was keeping an eye out. Let's see. Cool. Um, how long does the rendering take? It really depends on what the brush is and what the size is. Um, I was trying to get something, this one that rendering right now, uh, it's like 330 frames, which going to translate into maybe a little bit over 10 seconds, 10 to 12 seconds of okay. footage. Um, it had been rendering for an hour and a half and was about halfway there. So, oh, wow. <laughs> so sometimes it's an overnight job. Um, uh, other, other times it's a little quicker, but uh, this brush, which I happen to love so much, does take a lot. Um, I do... Uh, one of my favorite ways of having it do the rendering is to apply the brush strokes in a grid so that every brush stroke is in the same place, even if it's pointed in a different direction. So that gives it a lot better of a flow so it's not as jittery. Um, if you go random, you get a lot of jitteriness like the, the um, beach patrol. There was, there was a lot of jitter mm. in that. Um, so that's, you know, depending on what I'm looking for, I, 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 I like the smooth transitions, particularly when I'm using a line based brush and, and dealing with angles, because then you can sort of see the things wave. And I find that fascinating. <laughs> Is but, yeah, that, but those ones take, the, the, depending on the size of the frame, it might take a minute or so for each frame. Is there other software that you want to use that you've thought of using that you may use in the future or ways of presenting this work, um, other ways of presenting this work? Well, if anyone's got a really large building and some projection equipment, um, I, you know, I, it, it, isn't it everyone's dream to put it as big as possible? <laughs> I, I, I think this, I think the work would, I have seen it on big walls and it's very impressive. Yeah. Um, the, the Vexilla Florum piece being projected was, um, was very satisfying. And, you know, the, 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 have, having it out where, you know, the world could see it, I think that'd be great. Well, I, uh, I can't help you with the, um, the place, but my husband does projection and projection mapping for a career. So. Oh. <laughs> you get to that point. Well, okay. So projection mapping would be a delightful thing to know. <laughs> yeah, I don't, but he does. He does. 
Yes. Well, you know, it's, it's, I can hook you guys up. That'd be great. <laughs> there you go. That could be really, really cool. <laughs> oh, the, yeah. I mean, that that's. They, does he work in theater or? He he works on all different kinds of jobs. He actually has a steady job for once, which is crazy. He's working <laughs> on a Star Trek Picard. Oh, nice. Wow. Yeah, and they're they are back in pre-production starting this week so he is going to get a little busy but you know when you get to that point that he does all that stuff so they project map they they they're project the background that they yeah, things in front that of it like holograms and things that they used to do in post uh-huh do, it ends up being um you know the actors can interact with it more readily and it's less expensive than putting it in later for post cool yeah so oh yeah, yes, I'm, dale yes i would love <laughs> to work with the <a> dj <laughs> absolutely that's always been a, a thought of um i know in studio artists there is in something i yes what would i like to learn there is a capability of doing live drawing with it and it's had that capability since it was a brand new program over 20 years ago and I still haven't really ventured into that but that that could be totally fun yes exactly Dale when dance parties are allowed again yes <laughs> yes 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 but again you know people are doing things on zoom so you can always make a zoom video background or just make them accessible as zoom video backgrounds you can even pair up with Susan Feldman Tucker. Um, do you follow her on Facebook? She's amazing. She's been doing these wood cutout paintings for Zoom backgrounds. Like when you put your head through the hole and like they're different characters and stuff, that could be a really, really fun show. Like, <laughs> Zoom, you know, um, creating art. Yes, they, yep, um, creating art for, for Zoom. <laughs> totally, Dale. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. All right. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm typing this in the notes here. Yeah. I'm going to save the notes. But, um, yeah, save the chat. <laughs> Are there any, other, for any me. other? Oops, I'm sorry. <laughs> any qu other questions for Karen? What's next, Karen? Good work on. The, the, the next thing I have coming up is uh, a solo show at Tag Gallery, May, June. Um, at this point in time, I'm thinking of showing some collaborative work that I've done with Anne Marie Rousseau. Um, I have to double check with her that how much she wants to be involved in that. I'm once again, um, I think this is the time of the year that I get stuck. It's more like finances and tax time and the year has ended up and I'm not really sure what the next thing is going to be. So. I'm gonna, if, if, if Anne Marie doesn't wanna continue playing with me, maybe I'll sign up for the next uh, call and response and see if I can get my <laughs> brain whacked. Um, I'm taking lots of pictures of flowers and clouds, which is the last, um, the last show I had was flower imagery, um, worked in with cloud imagery, reflected and symmetric and, very um, beautiful and something that I want to continue working with because I just love the subjects and I love the results. Um, you never know. I mean, I was here working on, you know, something that I could do a demo and playing with this damn software that had to change itself because of the new Apple system. <laughs> they took away all my keyboard shortcuts and hate them oh no i have to click on the mouse all the time now it's really making me mad um but you know since i got those programs out of out of mothballs again well maybe i'll be doing some more animations i just it'll be interesting to see and, and that that's kind of where collaborations work really nicely for me because i don't know what's being thrown at me yeah i'm really good with thinking on my feet um, I, can, I like the idea of assignments. Um, I like making assignments my own. 
Um, so sometimes when I'm stuck, I'll just give myself an assignment. But usually I like the assignments coming from somewhere else so I can subvert them. Um, so yeah, really right now, I'm just sort of looking for what that inspiration is gonna be. Um, so, so I'm, 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 I'm pretty mellow right now. <laughs> Well, the deadline, if not, for, if not frantic, I'm not sure if that's good. <laughs> I don't know if you could be frantic in Hawaii. I mean, come on. <laughs> yeah, well, that's why I'm yeah. mellow. <laughs> it's different kind it's like, of frantic. Yeah. yeah. It's like, oh, artwork can wait. There's another sunset. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I'll exactly. take a picture. It'll be artwork later. <laughs> yeah. Um, the deadline for round 11 is tomorrow. I know it is, which is why I wanted make sure I get in touch with Anne Marie today. Yeah. <laughs> Last time it was we, we had been working for for so long together and then kind of the the call and response did we did were call and response in COVID coinciding? Yeah I started yeah. it in March because of call and response or because of COVID. So I started I did I, I did the call and response one and I kind of stopped working on her things and I haven't worked on her things for a <laughs> the whole time and it's like well I won't do the call and response so I can work with Anne Marie so it's kind of hard to do both at the same time because call and response is pretty time intensive you know yeah. every every other day you're making something and and it's it's an assignment and you got to do it right <laughs> yeah exactly but again so, it gets you thinking differently thinking it does it often. totally does there's yeah. the um you know, the last bit I do did came out of it. It was a different collaborative thing. Um, it wasn't from yours, but it was a collaborative process where I was supposed to bounce off of somebody else's work. And that's where the clouds and the flowers came from. Um, one day I had no idea what I was doing. The next, I had a whole series in mind. Yeah, so exactly. That's, that's, I love that about the, the collaborations because you're just getting someone else's idea and you may love it, you may hate it, <laughs> but you got to do something with it. Yeah. And yep. and then and then it's it's nice because then it starts building and you sort of get a better idea of what everybody's trying to aim for when you get to the end. Definitely. Um, Raina asked, "Have you also thought about exploring into three D spaces?" Um, I'm not sure if that is like we were kind of talking like, about like, projection mapping, but yeah, but you mean like like um, VR or 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 working AR. or making 3D vistas and things. Um, oh, VR, something. I actually have some interest in in uh, in I... making animated artworks that are dimensional and because I play with dimension in my flat artwork. Um, I'm, I'm always taking layers and making them co a cohesive piece, but also trying to make them not be flat in a, but in a 2D space. So different ways of bringing the layers into a more 3D space um, does interest me. I've worked a little bit with actually creating layers that I would like to have motors behind and do turning, you know, make <laughs> kaleidoscopic turning things. But, uh, there again, I, I think I, I think I need a fabricator and someone with knowledge to 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 do that for me. I was working with an engineer friend and he's, you know, he's got his own projects. So he learned a little bit with mine, but I think we both gave up on having him do it for me. You know, AR could also be interesting, you know, having an app on your phone and being able to see the layers in, you know, space, you know, kind of Nancy Baker Cahill. Are you familiar with her work? Let me write that one down yeah. here. <laughs> that could be fun to play with. Yeah. Um, yeah, they're <laughs> all sorts of things. Yeah, definitely. It's just, you know, so much software, so little time. <laughs> <laughs> each, each P 
piece of software um, takes either a class or just a devoted amount of time of just sitting there and playing with the knobs and dials and figuring out what what to do and how how to do it and how to make it do what you want it to do um you know random buttons work kind of nicely as a starter but if you don't know what to do after you've got that random button well, <laughs> you know it, it, yeah. it stops getting interesting so <laughs> Awesome. Any other uh, questions or comments for Karen? I loved seeing everything in one exhibition today. You know, and so I've like I've seen little bits here and there, but to see it all together um, and to see the the threads throughout that connect, even the really different pieces, um, that is really your voice in them. I really enjoyed it. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you everybody for being here. And thank you, Karen, for walking yes. us through all, you know, how your animations work and how you do them and, you know, kind of the behind the scenes look. Mm -hmm. well, you're welcome. And thank you, Christine, for putting this together. It's, you're um, you've been, you, you've, you've been my champion for a while and I really appreciate it. Mine and it a lot of people. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> proud, proud to be a member of your stable of artists. <laughs> Yay. Well, I'm honored to work with you too. <laughs> well, awesome. Well, I hope everybody stays safe and healthy out there. And um, I will echo that one. <laughs> yes. And, um, you know, hopefully we'll get through the next 11 days, you know, relatively unscathed. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank um, you all for coming. Thank Have you. Great evening. Thank you. Thank you. Great to see you. Great to see you guys. guys. Yeah. Right, Karen. Bye, bye bye. Thank you, Monica. We'll be reaching out to you. I think I sent you the best uh, Facebook request already. All right. I, my hands are full of clay, so I'll take a look soon. <laughs> don't worry. Don't worry. <laughs> You'll be there. Uh, I got to go back and catch up with those things right now. <laughs> Thanks. Bye. 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 Very soon. <laughs>